There's a scene in the film where you're talking to Balat and, and they're, you know, getting their yams or whatever their root vegetables are. And that brings to question this issue, and a scientist discusses it in the film. When we're talking about these nucleotides, plutonium and, and strontium, they go to a depth of 10 centimeters within the soil. Right. And, and, and the area of the polygon, if I'm understanding correctly, is the size of New Jersey, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's quite large. It's right. so, so we're talking about hundreds of nuclear explosions above and below ground. Mm -hmm. We've got a river that runs close by. Right, is that, the Irtish right? River. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we've got all of this nuclear material following, falling in and around with half-lives of two or three thousand years, these right. particles. So those particles go into the ground. Mm -hmm. the, you guys just illustrate this very well in the film. The plants absorb those particles. The cattle eat those plants. We then drink the milk and eat the beef from the cattle. Those particles go into us, disrupt our DNA, mm -hmm. seem to magnify over generations, right. which brings us to this image right here. One of, the, one of the most intense things in the film is when you go to this place. T tell us what this is. Uh, well, this is one of the craters from, uh, there was two explosions. There's this crater and then there's another crater not far from it. And uh, this was one of the above ground tests. So this is what's left. And As you can see, it's, it's massive. Yeah, and there's no, there's no fence. There's no like danger, do not enter. You know, it's just there. And uh, you know, it, it didn't take us too long to get there. I think it was, what, about a half hour drive? Yeah, it was from a half Sarjal? hour drive. We just got in the car and drove there. There was no checkpoints, nothing. And I mean, it's breathtaking when and you look at it. For a long time, they were taking their cattle there. The cattle would drink that water that you're seeing, and they would then eat that or drink the milk, like you said. And there's a story as well about the young girl who was on a, it was like a field trip for her class. Mm -hmm. And the driver was like, oh, that's weird. I haven't actually seen that lake before. And they all got out and they swam. And uh, I think she, she was the one that mentions like another above ground explosion. And they're all just like, you know, standing there laughing, thinking what is all of this, you know, kind of raining down on us. And it wasn't until later that, you know, they all started to get sick. And every one of those students, there was 30 of them, they all died, you know, prior to age 30. Um, and the woman who was talking about that, it was her sister who was the last to, to die. And I think she died at 29. So, you know, I mean, it's just amazing to think that, that there's no restrictions on places like this. And when you go there, your guide, uh, Bolat, I mean, at one point he tells you, like, listen, we cannot stay here. It's right. Like, we, we can only be here for a few minutes. This place is so highly irradiated. He was very concerned about all of your health. And, uh, yeah. And you know what's interesting about that is that there, there is background radiation there um, and you can, if you hold the Geiger counter up to certain rocks or what have you, they will, they will read a lot stronger than, than other things. But it's hard to tell what's what and where. Like the people from the villages do not have Geiger counters. Mm -hmm. They just don't. You know, every one of them should be fixed with a Geiger counter, really. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate enough to have one and we left it with Bolat. But there's a lot of fear surrounding that. Like, it, everything is unknown. And mm -hmm. as I say in the film, you, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't see it, you can't hear it. it. It's not like an oil slick where you're like, oh, those birds are covered in oil, oh, there's oil on the beach. It's not like that. You, you don't know where it is, you know, and we went to ground zero, and of course the Geiger counter at ground zero is just oh, going just screaming. crazy, because yeah. that's where the majority of, of mm -hmm. the, you know, that was the epicenter of a lot of the tests. And you could see, I mean, you filmed on the ground there. It was like Yeah, a it was crust. kind of this thing where the, the van pulled up and it was like, okay, go. And I left out of the van, started filming as much as I could, and I even started feeling sick within an hour. I think we are only there an hour. Yeah, and you end up with headaches and you yeah. kind of feel nauseous. And you can, just, you can just feel it. And this scene isn't in the film um, where we go there, but we'll be releasing it on YouTube at some point. But it's, it's very powerful and visceral to see that it was the first time when we were here at the crater, you can see it ticking. At ground zero, it's screaming. It's nonstop. Your heart starts yeah. racing because it's just going nuts.